This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Contractor killed and a man injured in gun attack at a bar in St. Mary. A gun attack at a bar in the community of Clonmel in St. Mary on Sunday night left a man dead and another injured. The deceased has been identified as 65-year-old contractor Valentine Moore of Gibraltar Heights housing scheme in the parish. Reports are that about 8.24 p.m., Moore was among patrons at a bar in the area when an armed man approached him and shot him in the face. Another man was also shot during the incident. The wounded men were assisted to the hospital where Moore was pronounced dead. The wounded man was admitted in stable condition. Investigations are ongoing. Farmer shot dead in Westmoreland. A farmer was shot and killed and several people were mowed down in Greenchill, Westmoreland on Sunday night. The deceased has been identified as 46-year-old Hopeton Stewart, otherwise called the Bogle or Blacks of Mailers Field Mountain in the parish. Reports are that at 7.30 p.m., Stewart was along the Jerusalem Main Road where he went to pick up his girlfriend. According to the police's corporate communications unit, Stewart was attempting to exit his vehicle when a lone gunman approached him and opened gunfire hitting him. It is alleged that Stewart went back into his vehicle and sped off. He reported they lost control of the vehicle and mowed down several persons along the road. The police were alerted and upon their arrival, Stewart was found slumped over his steering wheel. He was taken to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The condition of the person's mood down is not yet known. Nurses not pleased with a plan to hire temporary health care workers from overseas. The Nurses Association of Jamaica has joined some medical doctors in raising concern that bringing in temporary health care workers from the diaspora to address personal shortages is not a practical solution. The additional workers are expected to assist Jamaica in clearing a backlog of nearly 5,000 elective surgeries. However, NAJ President Patsy Edwards Henry has observed, among other things, that with the temporary workers no longer practicing in Jamaica, they will have to go through a process of orientation and guidance before being able to assume their temporary duties. Accordingly, she argued this arrangement doesn't seem practical to us and would defeat the purpose because the same nurses that we say are short in numbers would have to work along with and shadow these nurses that will be coming in. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has been defending his visits to eight hospitals in Florida, Georgia, Washington, D.C., and New York in the United States to recruit healthcare workers. Dr. Tufton said 100 healthcare workers in the diaspora have already agreed to participate and he anticipates that 400 applicants will join the initiative dubbed Code Care by the end of the year. When we looked at the outline, uh, they were bringing persons in, some for five days, some for ten days. Uh, these persons have not worked in the Jamaican setting for probably years. They would therefore need orientation and guidance. So it didn't seem practical to us to bring persons in who were not au fait and knew what was happening within the environment because it defeats the purpose because the same nurses that we say are short will have to work along with and shadow these nurses that would be coming in. Now we have big, big hospitals, we have small hospitals, we have the resources across the island. So one of the suggestions that we made was that we pull nurses and we group them and then we do week on our days of surgery in specific areas. So we looked at the, the possibility of getting groups together just like we did with the Blitz and have the backlog cleared. And whatever money the government have that will be accommodating, airfaring, vacating these persons who will be coming in, spend it on our locals. Flood alert project to be undertaken in Clarendon.
The National Works Agency and the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management are undertaking a flood alert improvement project for Clarendon, while the country is in the midst of the Atlantic hurricane season. This project, which will focus on Inontown and the Alley Bridge in Clarendon, was announced by Director of Major Projects at the NWA, Richard McCarge, at the July 7 Disaster Preparedness Town Hall held in Rocky Point, Clarendon, one of a series being conducted island-wide by the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. The NWA is presently partnering with the ODPEM in implementing what we call the Flood Alert Systems Improvement Project in Clarendon. The purpose of the project is to improve the flood alert system to protect the life and the property, McCarge said. Noting that the parish of Clarendon is particularly susceptible to natural disasters with the threat of landslides in the northern section of the parish and the sea level rises in the south, the project seeks to mitigate flooding. The project outputs are the installation and replacement of flood warning signs at both locations, the installation and repair of flood gauges at both locations, and the installation of flood traffic control gate at the Alley Bridge. The Alley Bridge will be outfitted with a real-time monitoring system so that we can be warned ahead of time as to imminent danger. You may be familiar with the gate that is in the Bogwalk Gorge. The gate is closed when there is a threat of the river rising to dangerous level. We will seek working along with ODPEM to have a similar control gate established at the Alley Bridge, McCarge noted. The NWA embarked on a disaster mitigation program prior to the start of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season and has started its extensive drain cleaning exercise, which targets the critical drains along the main road network. Stakeholder group urges government to reprioritize targets in national consensus on crime. An eight-member group of stakeholders comprising the churches, business union, and the civil society is urging the government to put the national consensus on crime back at the center of its efforts to fight the scourge of violence. In a recently released statement, the Consensus 2020 grouping also urged the government to re-engage with the Crime Monitoring and Oversight Committee in the coming weeks to reset the objectives and the targets for its reporting. The latest statement comes on the heels of the second anniversary of the signing of the document which had outlined a national framework for attaining a sustainable reduction in crime violence and corruption in Jamaica. The stakeholders are of the view that this is an opportune moment to take stock and review priorities and the targets. According to the statement, the consensus represented a wide-ranging program of measures aimed at achieving a sustainable reduction in crime, violence and corruption in Jamaica and was forged through agreement amongst the government, opposition, and the civil society. The group has noted progress in a number of areas, notably those relating to the transformation priorities of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the significant legislative changes, including the all-important Public Bodies Management and Accountability Act. Note was also made of the move towards a more cohesive government, as evidenced by the approach used in the Ministry of Gender on the National Strategic Plan to eliminate gender-based violence. While acknowledging the progress in those areas, the CMOC noted that some areas are lagging with regard to implementation plan, but said it recognized that tangible attention is being paid to the areas. It pointed to amendments to the Firearms Act that are currently before a joint select committee of parliament and recent pronouncements on advancing the highly anticipated Enhanced Security Measures Act. The group said it also noted that the anticipated timelines on some targets would have been delayed or deferred due to COVID-19-related reprioritization. It added that it was encouraged by the support of Jamaica's international partners and particularly the recent provision of tangible assistance by the European Union. Educator calls for resocialization of boys to improve academic performance. Another call has come for the socialization of boys to be equal to girls as the stark difference has resulted in the gap in male and female educational performance. The discussion has been reignited following the release of the results of this year's primary exit profile exams, which showed that female students outperformed their male counterparts. 
More girls than boys achieved a proficiency in mathematics, language arts, science, and social studies. Speaking with the news, Lynn Van Wright, president of the Jamaica Association of Principals of Secondary Schools, said too many areas which could stimulate interest in learning for boys are considered feminine and therefore bad for them. Children have to come to school with a particular kind of approach to learning. They have to come to school with, 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 with what I call the social capital, right? And, and it's not my term. It's something that came out of, of, of research too. And, and if it is that, for example, girls come having been orientated to being friendly with books, they are going to do better in language arts. You know, not to mention, you know, many studies in language showing that girls tend to have a kind of linguistic focus a little more than boys. So there has got to be things that are going to be assisting boys to develop that kind of thing. In the way we, 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 we our, our, our norms are in society. Many young men actually scoff at education, they scoff at speaking English, they scoff at, they scoff at doing things that are, that, that, that would help in education because people think that these things are girly. In the family generally, I think I think there are many, many parents, and, and especially depending on the types of families they get into, who are, are far more concerned with girls and schools than they are with boys and schools. So boys will be withdrawn much quicker than girls because there's this view that, you know, uh, girls are going to have it rough and maybe boys can rough it out. And that is something that I do not think is uh, going well for, for young men, and it is something that we ought to be looking into. Social commentator Dr. Nadine Spence explained that work has started to reduce the educational gap between boys and girls. I don't know if it's based on research. I imagine it would be. There's already this, this um, policy position within the ministry that boys um, develop at a, at a slower pace or perhaps later than girls. So they have already allowed for some of that consideration when scores are marked in, in, um, in PEP and so on. But, so what we are seeing is that that, that kind of um, preferential treatment that is allocated to boys, still, boys is still not working. And it goes to two things, I think. For us to reconsider how the education system um, treats with boys versus girls. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.